I'm Andrew Lysium and welcome to Aurora Forex, the incredibly in-depth, frustratingly amazing space strategy game. Okay, so we are at Davit, uh, specifically Davit A3, which is kind of important being over here and Sol only being here. We're clearing it out. Now, this is the last, as far as we can tell, of their space forces in the system. The Bulwark and the Centaur. Now, looking at these, if we pull up the precursors, we'll see that the Centaur has an ungodly amount of point defense shots. So we've brought something to deal with that. Faster missiles with a shorter range designed to just punch through. And with that, our task force is here. So we're going to have the original task force head back home. You did good. Just go back home chill, hang out, uh, and enjoy. Sol, Earth, refuel, resupply, load ordnance, and then begin your overhaul. There's actually no fleet at Sol right now, so we're a little bit undefended. That's probably a bad idea. I'm going to stop the facts, but anyway. Uh, where is the squid? Here we go. 13 days up from Davit, which is good, because if we look at the forces that just came back, the the fuel, it took them two thirds of their fuel to get here. So we're definitely going to need fuel to get back. Maybe a fast tanker is definitely on the cards. Either way, let's start closing the distance to our target. I'm preparing to fire. Okay. This seems good to me. Let us start aiming. Uh oh. Also, we want to turn our active sensors on. I realize that uh, it's not a default. Active sensors need to be turned on. It's kind of frustrating. Let's get down to business. We've only packed Wakazashis. Uh, much shorter range missiles. So we're going to auto-assign. Wakazashis are now loaded. Uh, assign in fleet. I think everyone target the Centaur. Take it down. Maybe have one third target the bulwark, two thirds on the center. Yeah. All right, it's flying in fleet. And then make sure sync fire is on. Open fire fleet. Let's do this. Cease fire fleet. Here we go. Okay, they just killed 11, 10, 10, 12. Oh, God. Wow, okay. Uh, two got through and hit armor. Ugh. Six. Strength 37. Wow. Those must be, must be STOs. So that's, that planet has at least six things that can fire into orbit with strength 37. Like, how? That's a lot of firepower. Okay. Right. Don't like that. Next round, everything goes at the center. At least some got through. All right, open fire fleet. Uh, make sure everyone's firing at the center. We did open fire fleet, right? Are we still reloading? Yes, they are. All right, here we go. Cease fire. Oh. I think I skipped very far ahead there, but we did kill the centaur. 17 hits. 13 against armor. 4 penetrating. And then another 24. All of which just blew the thing to smithereens. Might have been a little bit unfair there. I might have just skipped past this point of fence by doing a bigger five minute jump, but. Oh well. Um, we will now target the bulwark. So, auto target, missile fire control. Bulwark, bulwark, bulwark. I don't know if we necessarily need to fire everyone, but I also don't know to fire my missiles at ground targets because we'll wreck the damn planet. 
So I think we'll only open fire with like two ships here. I don't want to waste missiles. So we'll open fire all and open fire all. There we go. Please fire fleet. Yeah, anti-missiles are still up. That must be what the bulwark does. And all of them got taken down. Okay. You asked for this. Auto target missile fire controls. Sign to fleet. Open fire fleet. And you're still reloading. So we're going to turn off the ones that are reloading that just fired. Um, oh, was this two entire ships that just fired? Yeah, we'll wait for them to be reloaded. Alright, cease fire. Okay, we've got a few penetrating hits. 13 armor, 6 armor, 3 penetrating, 3 armor, 1 penetrating, 2 armor. But it's still up. This is what I expect from Precursors. This incredible, annoying tank. Open fire fleet. Seize fire fleet. Here we go. This should do it. Yeah. 20 hits just ripped it apart. We actually landed 111 nuclear detonations. Um, 20 killed it. The rest just exploded because they were like, we're not going to target. 44 were shot down by strength 1 energy and 3 strength 37s. Whatever they've got on the ground there has just insane amounts of power. Sadly, we're going to have to close with it because I want to take a few pot shots at the STOs with our energy weapons. So, let us clear all targets. Sign fleet. Uh, we'll turn sync fire off. And we're going to close. To extreme range of our lasers. I do not want to be any closer than that. So we'll follow and we're going to go to 170, 123. Just 10,000 within our limit. Here we go. Anything could happen. If we start getting hit by 37s, we're leaving. Something shot us. At that range with a strength 6. That feels like a beam weapon of some kind. Like a particle beam or maybe a lance. Who got hit? The Iron Requiem? No. That's a laser. That must be the damage 37 laser at long range. Wow! They've got lasers that can do six damage at this range. That's impressive. I want that tech. We want we want that tech. Thank you very much. Um we're gonna have to close. I'm gonna be keeping an eye on this. We're not gonna stick around long, but we're gonna take some shots. Now hopefully it's got a long charge time. We're gonna find out. Here we go. Let's do our firing. Okay, our main you, uh, near Ultraviolet, which is not great, can hit at this range. It only needs to do a little bit of damage. A ship weapon is incredibly powerful compared to the survivability of ground forces. Hitting is a different matter, though. STOs are very well defended. They can get fortification bonuses up to six, and they probably are fortified up to six, considering they've been there for, you know, ever. Oh. We're going to propagate this. We're going to have six firing four. So we're going to have 24 shots. Every 10 seconds. At least it's not too bad. We just need to hit with anything. One point of damage will do it. And at this range, we'll only be doing one point. So we're going to sign fleet. Yep. And then we're going to open fire fleet. Okay. 
Chance to hit 5.2%. That's actually not bad. No hits, though. Aha! We just killed uh, an STO point defense. Sweet. Uh, we are actually going to probably want to highlight that. I don't want to say it, but we haven't been attacked by that giant cannon yet. It's probably going to happen any minute now. Um, ground unit attack summary. That's going to need a back color. And then we're going to, because it's ground, we're going to go like a green. We killed another one. This time it was an STO. We just got hit by 4 strength 10 and strength 1. Who got hit? I'm trying to figure out who got hit here. Um, preparing for fire. Attacked. 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 I'm not sure who actually got hit. I'm going to quickly look or rotate through people's armor values. Oh, okay. It was the Iron Requiem. Ooh. All on the Iron Requiem. I'm tempted to have you bug out. We're going to stick around a little longer. We do need to try to whittle down these ground forces. Note that they had, I think it was 3,100 tons. They're now down to 29. Every little helps. There we go. That's another one. Luckily, they don't have too many long range weapons. But I definitely feel that the long range weapons they hit us there, those are the 37 damage up close. We can't try and do a landing against them. If we fly in to do the landing, we're going to take a 37 hit and that's going to be the end of it. Hey, good work so far. Seven strength tens. Oh, Iron Requiem, please detach, bug out, leave the system. Uh, you did a good job, but there is no way you're sticking around for this. Move to the jump point, strategist. You do not need to be here any longer. That's getting closer. Don't do that. That would be bad. That would be very, very bad. Um, We might need to just give you like a directly away order or something. You know what? We can actually do that. We give you an order to move to location away from the planet. And we just give you an order to get like uh, 500,000 clear. You know, a million. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then we just tell you to go to the jump point. Okay. This time, three hits. It looks like we have started to really whittle them down. But ow. Those things really hurt. I'm targeting the Mark of Honor. We're down to 2,000 tons now, so we've got over 1,000 tons. Took four hits there, though. Please don't tell me I'm targeting the Mark of Honor again. No. I'm targeting the Vinco Redemptor, which is fine. It's not actually doing much damage because it's a, it's a point defense ship. Ooh, I'm going to keep it on station a little bit longer, but that is getting dangerous. We're down to 1,300 tons. 1,100 tons. 900 tons. 800 Five. 100 tons. That's got to be point defense only now. 100 tons is way too small to be anything else. Okay, we killed it. We're going to do a very risky thing and we're going to check that we've killed it by doing a flyby. This is the dangerous part, but we'd have to do this at some stage. So, let's move in. I 
Okay, we could also take pot shots at ground forces if we wanted. I don't know how much we want to wreck the planet, though. It's already probably pretty wrecked. Hmm. Is there any way to tell? Here we go. Dust. Yeah, there's a lot of dust in the atmosphere. The base temperature is minus 46. The temperature currently is minus six. Dust is going to cause a cooling factor. So maybe it's not too bad. Okay. Could have been worse. And because we didn't use weapons of mass destruction. I know we used orbital like bombardment lasers. But because we didn't use missiles, we're okay. Missiles do huge damage to planets. And populations especially. Each point of missile warhead I think kills... It's 100,000 people. So, like, our ones which do 9 damage, it's just a million people almost dead. Whereas, you know, lasers and stuff, I think each point of damage is 2,000. Uh, they also cause radiation to a planet, which just ruins them. Uh, okay, so this is clear now. We're going to move up. Remove all. And we're actually going to give ourselves an order to chase down... Who was it we ripped off? CC Iron Requiem? Yeah, we're going to go and we're going to absorb. Because that way, you'll be both moving at the same speed because you've got the same speed. But when you absorb them, you'll be at the finished location. And hopefully, our tanker will join you there. So you're going to take 12 days to get to there. And you're going to take just over 13 that should be good. That's going to be a ground incursion we're going to need to deal with. But we now own the space around Davit. So we're going to go up here. And we're going to say, belongs to us now. Hmm. Awesome. Uh, we are going to need to, you know, actually do a ground invasion. But it doesn't look like it's going to be opposed by anything particularly dangerous. One thing we'll need to check now, because we're going to start building an army, is research. Hello there, my friend. Um, ground. Are we genuinely not doing any ground research? Oh, God. People finished their research or maybe died and every single lab got added to the max jump squadron size. This might be a little bit much to throw 41 labs at that. Just saying. Yeah, people died like that. Maybe? No, no, not that. Also, I would like this. Probably more so than the genome thing. Let's look. Construction production. We're doing... Defensive systems. I mean, hell yes, we want to actually get working on this. This is something you can really use, especially for um, like assault transports, because if you're coming in and the enemy's got surface to orbit fire, shields are going to help a lot because although they're going to be kind of less good against sustained fire because they take time to recharge. If you're just coming in, dropping people and leaving, pretty decent. Right, where was I? Oh, yeah. Um, we want to get defensive systems. So I'm going to start stripping this for labs because it really shouldn't have that many. I mean, don't get me wrong. We've got a great scientist, but it really shouldn't have that many. Uh, we're going to get beta shields. And you can only handle 10 at a time. Eh, everyone else can handle less. You're up. What next? Energy weapons. Uh, we're working on that. Next. Ground combat. Oh, yeah. I don't know why you stopped. That sucks. We need to do this. Uh, we can only have 15 labs at a time. Well, do 15 labs then. Also, we probably want to get ground formation construction rate, but that's pretty quick, so we'll queue that. Logistics. Um, you're working on salvage module, which is great, because if we want to salvage some of these ships, they're going to have good tech. Missiles. I don't want to go too deep into the missiles, but for now.
worth thinking about for the future. Railguns are nice. I do like railguns. Definitely somewhere we could go, but we are kind of going lasers this playthrough. Next playthrough, I'm thinking railguns. Uh, they can't be put in turrets, which sucks. It really does bug me that the only weapons you can put in turrets are gores and lasers. Because the only things that can shoot things that move fast are gores and lasers. Or other, you know, weapons that are just completely trash. Uh, I've got opinions. Sensors and control. Um, why do we stop on sensors and control? There's a whole load of stuff here that's partway done. Having a look at this. You are going to work on turret tracking speed next, so I don't know why we've stopped. Probably because someone died. So, Harvey Ram Tam Tam, this is going to be your job. Work on the latest one of that. Oh, actually, work on the flag bridge, mate. No, no we're not building a new thing. We'll need a flag bridge for a while. Work on that. And then, when you are done with that, then work on flag bridge, combat information center, main engineering, planetary sensor strength, thermal sensor, EM sensor. Like, there's a lot of stuff I want to do. Hell, beam, fire control, sure. Electronic warfare, it's also great. Yeah, we'll do all of that. There's a lot there. What we really want is to get this past. Yeah. But that's going to take a little while. So let us chill out with the music. And go back to the chill. We need to design ground forces now. If we have a look at ground unit training, we've got 10 facilities, which means we can build 10 units in parallel. So, this is where we get to design some fun stuff. So, right now, we've kind of got, effectively, two, I don't know what you'd call them, specialist units of some kind. Not even that. More like, not even support auxiliary? I don't know. Survey units. Geoarchaeologists and uh, the Geological Survey Company. Uh, I believe we did build another Xenoarch, which is currently on Earth. Yep. But we're going to need to design ourselves an entire army. So this is where we're going to start discussing how to build an entire army, which is, you know, pretty complicated. Um, first things first, we do have some stuff here on Earth, and I did mention in a previous video, they're not meant to be used in part of a large-scale organization. They're meant to mostly be, send them off to a planet, and they can defend the planet by themselves. I'm actually going to have the transport for the Zeko, or whatever you want to call them, um, take them places. So, you, in the vast trans system. Oh, I didn't, how do you come back home? Oh, you'd be sitting there by yourself? Oh. Okay, maybe I won't do that. I was going to have the uh, transport for the uh, archaeologists um, move some of these to some of our forward places, but I guess you're busy. Um, we're going to rename you for now. Uh, and you are the Exco 7th. Uh, one thing I will say, actually, is I'll say when you get to Earth, send a message. Now, what this does is it will give you a text message when it gets to the order. So I can say, um, Exco troop, troop, troop transport is home. Please move FM Co or Exco. So that will remind me when we get it back and it's refueled that we can now either start shipping out the Exco or the FM Co. Okay. Now, what do we have in the like way of designs. We've got logistics corpsman. We're not going to use you. We've got a plain old trooper. Not really going to use you either. Um, we've got the Xenoarch unit. Not going to use you. Construction vehicle. This is an assault force. We're not going to use you. 
Um, the Geo Survey Drone, again, not going to use you. Bunkers, not going to use you. STO, not going to use you. Command APC, with a capacity of 10,000, we will be using you. The Argus Drone, which is our forward fire direction, we will be using you. And the Hector Transport, uh, which is a logistics transport, which we will be using. So it's just these three. We have ourselves a company commander, Ajax. We have the Argus Drone, which is our forward fire direction for using orbital bombardment to help us out. And we've got the Hector, which is our logistics transport to kind of provide us with logistics stuff. We're going to need to design more stuff, though. And this is where the fun stuff starts to happen. We're going to go infantry, heavy power armor. Uh, note that this doesn't actually change how long it will cost to make. Like, the cost doesn't go up. That's a bug. There we go. The cost does go up. There we go. Um, but the weight doesn't go up. This still weighs the same as it would do. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. Three tons. Three tons. A person in light infantry armor is the same as a person in heavy powered infantry armor. I don't know how that's a thing, but I will accept it. Um, this means that it will cost you more to make your heavy power armor infantry, but you can get 10 of them in the same space as you can get 10 of them. So it just means that your limited drop troops are going to be much better. Here's a hint. We're going to go for the heavy power armor infantry. So we're going to grab you. Now, uh, you might as well just ignore like personal weapons and personal uh, weapons. Improve personal is where it's at. The extra AP. Combining the damage. Remember the GSP is slightly higher. Maybe you can make an argument for this one. Infantry are size zero. The only thing that matters is their gun. So while you could be like, right, I can have twice as many of these people. For four AP and four damage, imagine trying to get through our armor, which is 24. Because our racial is 12. Which means that with the double, we're on 24 armor. People will need like light anti-vehicle weapons. Like genuinely... Our guys running around in this heavy power armor are going to need to be shot with bazookas. That's the kind of level you'll need to regularly penetrate the armor. All of these other guns here, you're looking at APs of 8 or less. Which is a third of our armor. Light bombardment, mortars, 16. Light anti-aircraft, 16. Yeah. This is why, I mean, our racial armor is very high right now. We're actually two tiers of armor above our actual weapon strength, which is... Hilarious, so we're going to have staying power. Killing power is a problem. Either way, uh, this is why I generally say pick AP-10. Because AP-10 is a pretty good place to be with this right now. Um, it is the most expensive of the basic personal weapons. But I think it's worthwhile. So you're going to be a heavy uh, trooper with improved personal weapon. I don't know what you call that. Um, assault rifle? Heavy Trooper. Probably just Heavy Trooper. I don't think we're going to use anything else. So, you're good. We're going to dump you in. Ooh, maybe we should, like, have a name for our Heavy Troops. Yeah. Also, I'm pretty sure you're using Light Armor, but I can't tell straight away by looking at you, which is frustrating, which is why I tend to use names that are a little bit more descriptive. You can see the component... Um, improved personal weapon. But the only reason I can tell that you probably are totting light power armor is the cost. Which kind of frustrates me. So we're going to rename you. Uh, and we're going to call you Praetorian Trooper. Just Praetorian. Uh oh. Precursors use that name. Eh, we're going to take it off them. Our elite troops are called Praetorians. That's what they're called. So, um, that's good. But we can now have heavy crew-served anti-personnel if we really want. And crew-served anti-personnel. Here's my opinion on this. Heavy crew-served anti-personnel is generally not worth it on infantry especially. Look at the difference in size. Almost twice as big. You gain a 50% up in AP. But damage doesn't go up. Shots don't go up. And it costs an extra 50% supply. I generally don't really use the heavy crew served end personnel. I know the AP is better. But for a 50% bump in the AP, you're paying 50% extra supply. 
And also, your size is almost double. It's not worth it in my view. So we're going to grab um, a Praetorian with machine gun. Um, we can call you Praetorian, MG Praetorian, machine gun Praetorian, um, gunner Praetorian. Say Praetorian. Um, could use with MG. I don't trust Aurora not to break by using that though. So we're gonna say Praetorian with MG. We can always rename them later. Instant that. Um, we could give light anti-vehicle weapons. Light bombardment. No, I'm not going to worry about that too much. Uh, we'll go with the light anti-vehicle weapon and we'll go LAV. Right. You're good. We don't really want to do anything else with you. You've got your three different varieties of heavy power armor troops, which are pretty damn awesome. Uh, next... What do we want to do? Uh, by the way, crew served anti-personnel is definitely the sweet spot. Compare that to, say, you improve personal weapons twice the size. You do lose 2 AP. And yes, the supply is much higher. Five times as high. But you get six times the shots. I tend to think that crew served AP is great. I'd give everyone that if I could. But you'd, you know, have half the number of people. So maybe not quite as good. But very, very tempting. Give everyone machine guns. Uh, right. We're done with infantry. Let's build some more some tanks. So we're going to go heavy vehicle. Heavy vehicle armor, which makes our racial armor value 72. Um, have a look at this. Can you see anything that can get through 72 armor regularly? Mm -mm. Heavy anti-vehicle is the closest, and that's 48, with two-thirds the armor value. So we're in a pretty good place with this. Um... So we're going to have you have a heavy anti-vehicle weapon. That's going to be your main weapon. The idea is that our tank is going to have an anti-tank weapon. It can shoot tanks. It wouldn't be able to do a very good job shooting itself, but it would get close. Uh, but it will also be able to take out light vehicles, medium vehicles, etc. Uh, we could give it the additional weapon be another one of those. But we could also say, you know, have the crew anti-personnel... Or we could go heavy crew anti-personnel. It would cost us the extra eight. It might be worth it on the tank on the basis of the tank's unlikely to get killed. So it's a little bit of a better investment. And the AP of 12 is a bit better suited on the tank because it can be used against light vehicles to an extent. Might be worth it. Um, I probably will say on the tank, yes. So we need a name for a tank. This is a pretty hefty tank. Like, this is a heavy vehicle. So, it's kind of like the equivalent of, like, your Lehman Russ or your, maybe your Scorpion out of Halo. Um, something chunky. Maybe even a bit heavier than that. This is like, a, you know, medium vehicle is what you start off with, which is kind of your main battle tank. So, this heavy vehicle is kind of like your heavy battle tank. Okay. Why don't we go Perseus? Uh, see us. MBT, main battle tank. With HAV and HCAP. I'm going to call it a HMG, heavy machine gun. I don't like crew served anti-personnel as a, as a, you know, nomenclature here. It is correct. It is a crew weapon that's anti-personnel. It just... CSAP doesn't look as good to me as MG and HMG. Uh, so, you are good. I mean, I probably don't need to put that down. We can probably just truncate that and be like, this is the Perseus MBT. Or even a Perseus battle tank. Perseus heavy tank. Yeah, that looks better. The Perseus heavy tank. And we'll instant this out. Um... And that's probably all we need unless we were to make, you know, a couple of medium things. One thing that we could be considering is the autocannon, which is kind of like a, a midway between your 
crew served anti-personnel and your anti-vehicle weapon. So like, look at the auto cannon here. It's got an AP of 24. Which is actually quite respectable. Like if you want to look at say, right between your medium and your light anti-vehicle as a medium auto cannon, fires three shots, damage is respectable. If we had the heavy auto cannon, probably consider it more. The only downside is the size. That auto cannon is as big as a medium auto cannon, by the way, as the heavy anti-vehicle gun. This is not a heavy auto cannon. This is a medium auto cannon. I think it's just not acceptable for the size. It's just too big. And the size that that costs, we could have more tanks. So I'm going to pass on that. But it is tempting. Um, anyone wondering why I'm passing on the auto cannons? I just generally think they're a bit too big. That's the only issue. Uh, right. We could add in some light vehicles if we wanted. You know, put down vehicles that have a heavy anti-vehicle weapon, maybe. Uh, light vehicles, I think, are a bit more interesting. You can pretend that they're drones and they have certain, you know, battlefield roles that are kind of cool. Uh, you could even go, hey, this light vehicle has a anti-vehicle weapon or whatever. But troops can do that and troops are size 0. This is size 12. Now, admittedly, this does have hit points. It's got three times a multiplier, so it will be able to take a few more hits. But, and it is, you know, better at not getting hit. But, yeah, I come back to the troop could do this and we could have you know how many almost twice as many troops doing this what's the light water can in this case 10 16 yeah 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 no get the troops to do it the to hit modifier on the light vehicle is nice it's hard to hit the light vehicle than it is to hit the troop um you know what why don't we just have a few for flavor just for role play flavor I think it would be cool. Uh, okay, this is going to be a anti-tank drone. I kind of imagine because our weapon is based off lasers right now because lasers is our strongest category of weapon type. I kind of imagine that this is kind of like a little beam drone that flies around and just goes thew, 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 like Star Wars kind of esque drones. Like imagine, um, so like the Mandalorian Tie Fighter, like it's pretty powerful when it fires at the ground. Take that, strip off the wings. Maybe make it a little bit more drone-like, and that's kind of the the light vehicle that is an anti-vehicle weapon. Um, we're gonna call you. Do, 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 gonna find a name. What about the Orpheus LEV drone. Orpheus LEV drone. There we go. Okay. Now, to turn this into actual, like, formations. Um, we're going to need to make a frontline unit. This unit is going to be on the front line. The way the battle works is you have three different lines. You have your front line, you have your middle line, and you've got your back line. And your front line does the fighty, 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 and the other two lines hopefully don't fight, but they can if the enemy break through or whatever. Hopefully that never happens. So we're going to make the frontline unit. This is going to be like the sharp end of the wedge. Um, it's going to be the one that's in the trenches doing the fighting. So it's going to be no support elements. You get the idea. Uh, we're going to go new. And this is going to be an assault company. So um, assault company. Assault mixed company. Amco. Yeah, because this is going to be a mixed company because we're going to mix a whole load of stuff in here. Um, sure. Oh, I always do this. I keep saying it. Uh, assault mixed company. And then Amco. Right. We're going to get an Ajax Command APC because it commands 10,000 tons. Funnily enough, this is going to be a 10,000 ton. 10,000 tons for me is company size. Um, we're going to have two of these. The reason being that if one dies, we still have a second one there. And it's not huge. You know, we're talking 62 tons. So extra 62 tons for the backup. Then we're going to want to get ourselves the big units first. So we're talking the Perseus heavy tank. Let's get ourselves 36 of them. Okay. About a third of the tonnage is tank. That's fine. Um, then let's get ourselves the stuff in between. So let's grab the LAV drone. Let's order 
24 of them. The Argus drone. Now, these are the ones that you put on the front line and are able to just call down enemy fire. Uh, not enemy fire, sorry. Spaceship fire on your enemies. Definitely don't call down the enemy fire. That would be bad. Um, so we'll probably want just like maybe one of these in each frontline company because we're going to have a fair few of these companies. So we'll get one for now. We can always change that later. Um, and that leaves us with about 5,000 tons, which is plenty of room to play with. Maybe we'll have a play with these LAV drones. Mm, 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 yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, let's grab some Praetorians in. Now, like I said, massive fan of the machine guns. I think they're honestly one of the better weapons you can have. So let's have, say, 100 people with them. Let's edit that. Let's go for 128. Sure. Um, then let's get non Praetorians and we're going to add 100. And with the anti tank weapon, um, 48. I want to adjust that down because obviously we've got heavy tanks that are a bit better at that. So let's go to 36 of that. Praetorians, let's up this to 256. Still got room to play. I think we up the number of heavy tanks. Because if we encounter someone who's able to go through our main troops, because obviously they, they have heavy armor, but if they can go through them, why not up the uh, the tanks? Just have something that can hold out. So let's go up to 64? Nah, too many. Well, we could strip down the actual troops themselves and rely on the tanks. They do have machine guns attached. Heavy machine guns. Yeah, why not? Yeah, uh, well, no, uh, no. Let's go down to 56. Okay, we're only looking at 340 tons to shed now. And then Praetorians will bring you down to 216. Gotta shed 100 tons. Um, we'll drop some of the anti-tank rifles on people because we've got the drones. Okay, we've actually got a little bit of room to play now. What do we want to grab? We could do another Argus drone. 72 tons. It, it would eat most of the remaining. Hmm. Why don't we just edit some of these to make them round numbers? Can we do this? A little bit of fiddly trickery. Yeah. Managed to make the MG numbers go up. I think... We might almost be able to get that to work. We need to shed like 12. That's easy to do. We can shed two troops. 198. Done. This is a pretty potent frontline unit. There's 451 people in this company. So a little bit big for company. Uh, 56 of them are heavy tanks. It has a backup command. It's got two of them. Uh, there are 24 Orpheus light anti-vehicle drones. Uh, one Argus drone capable of directing orbital bombardment. 150 Praetorians with machine guns. Almost 200 Praetorians. And 20 Praetorians with light anti-vehicle weapons. Yeah. This is pretty good. Um, the only thing I might adjust is like reduce the number of Orpheus. Because they're not great. As I mentioned, we're better off just chucking a whole load of Praetorians. Like you've got 24 of these. And they weigh, you know, more than double the 20 of these guys. So, we'll probably just reduce you to, like, 12. Just because I like the idea of we have a few drones to help us out. And then... Oh, for a start. We'll up you to 200. Not quite. There we go. 9996. Can't really do anything that lasts four, anyway. There we go. It's good. We've got 40 LAV troops. Uh, we've got 150 machine gun troops, 200 troops, one Argus drone, 12 Orpheus LAVs, 56 Perseus heavy tanks, and an Ajax command APC. Well, two of them because we've got the backup. Okay. This is a very mixed unit. We could make, say, a tank unit and an infantry unit, and we could do it that way. Um, certainly something that we could consider. 
Yeah, I think mixed units are probably the way to go, though, because that way you don't have units that are falling and then getting overrun while you still have your tanks are sitting there kind of awkwardly. Yeah, mixed units are the way to go. Okay, so that's our frontline unit. We're going to need a command unit that's going to command multiple ones of this. So what I tend to do is go up a level and I have a battalion. And my battalions are 50,000 troops. You don't actually make a 50,000 troop unit. That would be a big unit. Um, what you do is you make a 10,000 so it can fit in the same transports, but capable of commanding 50,000 because then you have its weight, 10,000, plus the weight of four other 10,000 companies. So we're going to make a HQ unit that can deal with that. So light vehicle, um, headquarters, void combat, and you're going to be 50,000. And then I need to figure out a name for you. The last one was Ajax, so it was a general, right? Um, this could be Achilles. And this is Assault Mixed Companies Command, so I guess this is um, Assault. No, it'll be Battalion Command Company. Because it's company sized? No. It's a battalion leader, so it should be BA. What do we go? Regiment next? And then army? No, battalion. Um, this is assault. Or HQ battalion. Probably doesn't matter if it's assault or not. So HQ Battalion, I don't know what to do for this. HQ Battalion. Sure, we'll go with this for now. Ah, God damn it! every time. Ah, C for Command. Assault Command Battalion. That's what it is, Akbar. And then we'll just rename you. There we go. Now, we'll put two of these ends so that we have backup. Although, we could probably just do one, to be honest. We'll put two. Have a backup. Now, here's the important part. This is going to be on the rear line, defending. And by defending, I mean, honestly, not really defending, just sitting there. It's going to have logistic stuff. It's going to have supply to be able to supply to the front. It's going to have an awful lot of these Hector transports. So the Assault Mix Company uses almost 4,000 GSP. We're going to probably want maybe four times that. So 16,000 GSP each. And there are four of them. So we're looking at, you know, 15,000 times four, 60,000 plus the four, 64,000. So we're going to want a lot of these Hector transports. So now we're going to go, hey, what happens if I have 150? Um... A bit too much. We could edit that down a little bit. Say go 130. Yeah. That leaves a little bit of room. Not much room, but it does leave a little bit of room. We're going to use that. We're going to go medium vehicle with light armor. We're going to go heavy bombardment, which we don't have because we are still researching it. Yeah. This is why I wanted this. Yeah, no bother. We'll still be building a whole load of these by the time that's done. So this needs finishing. Um, the next level up is going to be regiment, which for me is a quarter of a million tons. Probably should honestly be company regiment, just skip battalion, and then army, and then like army group. But hey, -ho. what do I know? Um... Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. I'm going to rename you. That feels better. Uh, the next one up, we need a unit. We need a new light vehicle, light armor, headquarters, avoid combat. And this one is going to be quarter of a million tons. This is the... This commands an army. And that way we send in 25, 10,000 ton dropships to drop the troops. Jobs are good. 
and this is definitely not an Achilles command. Um, it could be Heracles, but I kind of think of that as strength lessons in general. You know what? I think this is actually the level where we get up to God's Ares command APC. Now, note that the weight actually doesn't get any bigger. Uh, it doesn't seem to change from 50 to 250,000. So, whatever. Uh, we'll instant that. Formation template. New. Salt company. I won't make this mistake this time. Salt command. Army. Assault command. Army. And then Ares Command OPC. And we'll have two of them. Note the rank over here. That's a captain. That's a colonel, which is good for regiment. And then we've got general. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you're commanding that much. Blah, 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 blah. The weird thing here is that because we're using a very set setup with the five fives we will have effectively four under one four under one four under one four under one and then the army regiment one with four below it so it might be a bit weird if we wanted to do this a little bit more elegantly we'd come up with a better plan but this is my way of making it quite quick and dirty it'll make sense when we actually go into the planning of how to make the units fit but for now, bear in mind that this is going to need command units as well below it. So it's going to need the same GSP as you guys. And then probably more so. So um, we're going to get our active transport. I think we're going to add 150 straight into the mix. And then whatever's left, we can add bombardment if we wanted. We could add a few Praetorians to help defend. Um, we'll get to that when we actually start building these guys out. But for now, they're good. Our racial armor is fantastic. Our racial weaponry is kind of eh. Um, but you are good to go. So we're going to go five seconds. Oh, are you still targeting? Yes, you are. Please fire fleet. Clear all targets. Same fleet. Uh, but that five seconds has made our ground units update, and now we can build stuff. We're going to build Assault Company Mixed, and we are going to need... Um, so there's five groups of five, four in each group. So five times four, we need 20. So we're going to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're just going to keep going. There we go. Now, that's going to take some time. The build time in each of these is three and a half years, which is not tiny, but this will be ridiculously strong. Again, we've got people in heavy armor. Double the cost, but they have very, very good survivability. Um, and there are techs to improve how we're doing with this sort of thing. Like, we can get ground force construction rate bonuses, which we haven't got so far. So we can easily double this. Which, if we have a look, actually, at our research... There we go. That's going up from 200 to 320. And then we can do 400 after that. And that's 2,000 research. So that's going to be easy to do. Especially if we throw more people at it. Which I kind of want to do. We're only maxed at 15 out of 15. Here. Oh, well. Um... We might be better doing the ground force construction rate first. That way we can take full advantage of that. I'm actually going to cancel that. Ground force stuff. Ground force construction rate. Sign. And then heavy bombardment after. And yeah, that'll be done by January next year. Oh, you caught up with them. I guess they were taking a weird route. Uh, okay, go to the strategy jump point. Hey, look, it's the Arrested Development coming in to do a lovely survey. We're actually going to find out what's in the damn system now. Uh, we're constructing more Finley shards. We're going to need more and better tugs. This is becoming a problem.
Okay, you're at the jump point. How long till you get there? A few days. Okay, I've had the squid join the task force this time. And it's got no auto refuel. There we go. We need to change that to refuel own fleet. And then hopefully we should see this fuel going up. I'm actually going to just do a skip of like three hours. Did it go up? The thing got in the way. 20, 20, 31, 21. At 31. That looks like you got refueled. Yeah, you're getting refueled. Sweet! <laughs> Sadly, it's doing one at a time, which makes sense. Uh, but we're going to give you a movement order and auto route back to... Sol. Earth. And then detach tankers when you get to Earth. Then refuel, resupply, load ordnance, and then begin overhaul. We're also going to need to do repairs because, as you might notice, people took armor damage. Yeah. Anyway, long journey home. Oh, no. We just left. Who are these kids? We didn't finish clearing the system. Can you turn around? Yes, you can probably turn around. Uh... Damn it. Okay. Auto route to... Jump to Davit. Get in here. 31 days. Crap. How much fuel have we got available? N. Can't afford to keep pushing this limit. Movement orders. Um... Remove all. Move to the strategy jump point. And no, no, like standing orders. Hopefully, you can get out of here. It looks like they're chasing us. And they've got an Ark Royal. What the hell? Okay. Uh, anyway, while we're doing this, I do need to make one quick change. And that is, we're going to go to... Vash. And we're going to... There we go. Go back to our normal complement of missiles. That way, when we go and reload. Oh, actually, I we'll have to tell them to... Oh, no! Damn it! This is what I get for jumping the gun. That's a lot of missiles. 40 missiles at the Arrested Development. Okay, Arrested Development. Abandon ship, abandon ship, abandon ship. I repeat, abandon ship. Uh... There we go. Okay, 14 days to survive. How quickly can we get there if we drop the tanker? I don't like the idea of doing that. We need the fuel. Um. Uh, maybe we have to just stand still so that we can get refueled quickly and then just dash in. Okay. Stay stationary because you can be quicker this way. Um, uh, 
Okay, we are refueling. It might take us like a day to make a dent in our fuel. One big downside with the latest fuel changes in C Sharp is it makes it really hard to actually distribute fuel evenly. Are the life pods just gone? I think the precursors just murdered the life pods. Is that on a log? They escaped. In days didn't go by. I think the life pods were shot up by the precursors. What? God oh, damn it. Where did they get those ships from? Where did they get those ships? That makes me so mad. Okay. I don't think we have fuel to take everyone back. I think we're going to have to start detaching people. Yeah. Um, I don't think you can make it. Go to the Davit jump gate by yourself. Uh, we're going to have to cut you off. Who else can we send? Well, we're going to drop the tanker. You've done your job. Go to Sol. Uh, join the squids. We're going to need more fuel sent out. And we have fuel issues. This is not good. Oh, luckily Earth just got a fuel um, supply. So yeah, that's great. Uh, okay. The rest of the force jump into Davit. Okay. God damn it. The precursors need to pay. We just cleared this place. And we need to unfortunately send another tanker. You know, that was about like, oh... Maybe this is a bit early to be doing the fuel thing. Nope. All right, Squid 2 is full of fuel anyway. Can't remember why, but you are. So, movement order, route to... Oh, you won't be able to route to Davit because you're trying to avoid it. Okay, just route to Strategist for now. And then we'll manually push you through to Davit. That way you can meet up with the... Which which one is staying? Is it the... Uh, uh, the Vinco Redemptor? Yeah. Okay. The rest of you are going to have to move in system. We're going to have to take them again. God damn it, Precursors. Why did you do this to us? We are packing Wakazashis. But now we only have half the point defense because one of our point defense ships is out of fuel. And we don't have our long range missiles. So we're going to need to close distance. This could be a problem. Well, it's back to Davit again next episode. I've been Andrew Lissy. If you want to get involved in the actual like RPing and the influencing, feel free to check out the Discord. There'll be a link down below to my linktree.ee forward slash Andrew Lissy. Linktree. Just happens to have an E at the end, so it's great. Link dot E forward slash enter Elysium. And uh, the Discord's on there. Go up to the Discord, check it out, chat with people. There's also an announcement thing which posts all my videos on my streams so you don't miss them. If you want to catch my videos and you want to try and rely on Russian roulette, there's always the YouTube sub feed. So subscribe, hit the bell icon. But if you actually want to help out with, you know, the algorithm, uh, liking and commenting will help as well. I've been at Elysium. Until next time, stay shiny.